restorative dentistry for children or restoration of the primary teeth. Why we restore primary teeth? First, to eradicate the disease, repair or limit damage from the cares, prevention and relief of the pain, maintenance of healthy oral environment, maintenance and improvement of the appearance, ensure a fashion mastication, maintenance of arch length, restoration of speech. For the goal of restorative therapy are to restore the tooth to a state of health, function, aesthetics, and to prevent the current of this is start with early diagnosis of the case. We have a visual, tactile, maybe radiographic examination using a bat wing or the digital radiograph, light emitting devices like laser fluorescence device, quantifying laser induced fluorescence, fiber optic trans elimination, or the use of electric caries monitoring. This is the visual and tactile examination using mirror and the prop. Using a bite wing radiograph. Here we can see we can see carious legion, early carious legion in the proximal surfaces of the lower D, which appear as an inverted triangle with a base at the surface. There is a later emitting devices. The most common is the diagnodent. Also, this is a fiber optic trans elimination device. Electronic caries monitoring use electronic caries detector. Caries classification. The older classification was a GV black versus the modern concept. GV black concept based on elimination of the caries by grass surgical removal of the coarse structure. It based on the principles of extension for prevention. It classifies caries into sex classes. These are the sex classes of the GV black. The recent concept based replaced the surgical model which is invasive, but based on removal of the decayed and unsupported heart tissue. While the medical model, which is a preventive in nature, concentrated on the preservation of the tooth structure. Monday and you, in 1997, developed a new classification, which based in two main determined site and the stage. We have only three sites. Site 1, bits and fissure. 2, the contact area, whether anterior or posterior. 3, in the cervical area. While the stages is a five stage, starting from no cavitation, minimal, moderate, enlarged, and extensive. The site, as we said before, site 1, bits and fissure surfaces of the posterior and the anterior teeth. Site 2, contact areas. Site 3, cervical areas. This is starting from zero. Initial caries legion with no cavitation. Size 1 is the smallest minimal legion requiring active intervention. Two, moderate size cavity. There is still sufficient sound tooth structure to maintain the integrity of the remaining crown and accept the occlusal enlarged cavity, which needs to be modified to provide some protection for the remaining crown from the occlusal load. Size four is an extensive cavity with loss 
of the cusp form for the posterior teeth and incisal edge of the anterior teeth. This is stage one, stage zero, one, two, three, and four. Here, the classification according to the size, the concept, includes two numbers, the first for the site and the second for the stage. Here, one means site one, which is an bits and fissure, zero, no cavitation. Here, stage, site three, cervical, stage zero also, no cavitation. The same site one, stage one, site two, stage one, site three, stage one. The same for all cases. This site three, stage zero, site one, stage one. Principles for the SISTA concept is our tooth structure saving, utilization of the modern adhesion technology, and by integration, which means by compatibility. The modern concept or the many many intervention density also referred to micro density, preservation density, and many many invasive density mainly on early detection of the carious lesion, evaluation of the individual risk for cares, application of preventive strategy, non-invasive approach to non-cavitated lesion, recalls according to the patient risk. The non-invasive approach for non-cavitated lesion, which is the main concern for the modern concept, aims to enhance tissue repair to arrest and even reverse many men loss associated with early carious lesion. The non-invasive approach for non-cavitated lesions includes topical application of fluoride varnish, the use of remineralizing solution, and carious resin infiltration. For the cavitated lesions, means we have to make a cavity preparation. Performing cavity preparation for the primary teeth, you have to put into consideration some anatomical variation. The primary teeth have a shorter crown, thinner enamel and dentine. The thickness of the enamel and dentine for the primary teeth have that of the permanent. They have a larger pulp and higher pulp hole. Also the enamel root directed occlusally at the cervical area of the tooth. They have a greater cervical constriction, narrower occlusal table, and more broad and flattened con contact. For class one, Muller, the outline should involve all the curse in identity. The maximum intercuspal cavity width should be not more than one third of the intercuspal width. The cavity should extend just below the dentina enamel junction. This means that it is shallower than the permanent. This to provide sufficient bulk if we use amalgam restoration to withstand the occlusal force and avoid pulp extension. The pulpal floor should be slightly concave or flat to allow greater pulp, better distribution of the stress, and avoid endangering of the pulp. All the cable surface margin should be approximately 90 degree. The internal line angle should be rounded. This is a summary for class one cavity for amalgam restoration. For the modern concept, you have to remove the decay only and seal the adjacent fissure. 
as we know, it concentrated on the preservation of the tooth structure, no extension for prevention. Access only the carious lesion and see the adjacent removal of the carious lesion and seal of the adjacent fissure, which is known as preventive resin restoration. As regards class two cavity preparation, class two is cons consists of three portions: occlusal portion, isthmus portion, and proximal portion. And each one of them, you have to follow all the rules. For the occlusal part, the same as class one cavity. The proximal box, starting the isthmus first, the isthmus should be half of the intercuspal dimension to avoid weakening of the cusp and provide material bulk. The exupalpal line angle should be paddled or grooved. Buccal and lingual wall of the proximal box should be converged occlusally but diverged to outside to clear the contact area. Proximal box line angle should be converged occlusally as we said. We can place a retentive exopalpal and exolingual grooves. This is Class two cavity, the width of the occlusal between fourth and one third of the intercuspal distance. Here, the isthmus portion is half the intercuspal distance. The gingival seat of the box should to be extended just beyond the contact area. Contact area, as we know, is a carrier susceptible area. Therefore, the gingival seed should be past this area, but should not be so far deep to avoid endangering of the pulp. Therefore, the gingival seed is placed just beyond the free gingiva to ensure clearance of the contact area and to avoid endangering of the pulp. It is unnecessary to bevel the gingival seat, since the enamel root is directed occlusally in the primary seat. For the permanent, the enamel roots are directed gingivally, therefore, I have to bevel the gingival seat. This is summary for class 2 cavity preparation, including occlusal, isthmus, and proximal class 2 cavity preparation. For the mattressing system, it's better to use the T-band or spot-welded band for primary molars. T-band, you have to cut a piece of stainless steel band, put over each other like T, then weld them. This is the T-band. Or we can use a spot-welded band. The T-band for the primary molar is better to accommodate the pulpous shape of the primary molar. You make a controls better than the ivory or the